This lecture will cover the Module 2 outcomes for PowerPoint as presented by a lot of the Cengage learning material. So let's first of all take a look at the outcomes and I think the easiest way to do that is to start by opening up PowerPoint. So as you can see here on my taskbar, I've downloaded a local version of Office, in this case Office 2021. Let me let you know that the majority of these basic outcomes that we're learning in these first three modules work with previous versions of Office and will work with future versions of Office. So this can be valuable for you even if you don't have PowerPoint 2021 version. So the first thing is in some of the content, we need to download custom themes. Now, one of the themes that you'll use within the Sim Sandgate Sam Cengage material is this celestial theme. Now I've downloaded it, but I'm going to show you how to search for themes to download. I've got some base themes on my computer here that I can look at, and I can simply come in and start typing to find additional Microsoft available themes. So I'm going to go ahead and type celestial. It opens this up. I'm going to click on the celestial theme. And if I haven't downloaded this to my computer, which we know I have, it would say download in top of the create. So look for that. And in this case, I'm going to hit create. Now, before we go any further, let's talk about security here. Okay. PowerPoint presentations can be loaded with malicious software, viruses, etc., or links to malicious software. So we want to be careful downloading any theme that is not certified by Microsoft or from a trusted site that we know we can trust. So make sure that themes are coming. Now, because I'm inside PowerPoint and looking for new themes, I know that it is searching the office.com template themes to give me results and I can trust those in there for sure. So as you can see, I've already got that open, the celestial theme, we'll go ahead and use it to look at the secondary outcome, which is inserting a symbol, okay? Now, first of all, if you notice, I'm inside a text box. The majority of stuff we do will be inside text box because if I right click inside a text box, I get a lot of options for formatting. Whereas if I right click outside of a text box, I'm getting the formatting for the background or the overall slide deck. So I'm going to come back in here. I've just typed trademark. I'm going to come up to the insert tab in the ribbon, choose symbol and find a trademark I want. Well, I'm going to use the trademark symbol. Now, keep in mind, there are just tons of different trademarks that we can choose from. So you're sure to find a customized symbol you want within this selection. I'm going to choose trademark. If you notice, I've highlighted it and I click insert and it inserts that trademark for me. Now, the next outcome is to insert a hyperlink. Again, I need to be in a text box and I'm gonna come in here, okay? And I can come to link, so I can insert a link. This is gonna open up the insert hyperlink dialog box. Now, another thing we wanna do is make sure that we're not clicking on phishing links. Another security thing, I'll give you an example of that. Let's just say though, for the address, I want the address to be www. This is the address that the hyperlink is going to take the user to, www.cocc.edu. Now, if you notice, that text will display as www.cocc.edu. If I hit the control and the key, this is happening on my other computer, it's going to open up that URL, that uniform resource locator, so that I can get to that site. Now, what I want to make you aware of is then if I right click, okay, and edit the link, I can actually make this say whatever I want it to say, you know, abc.edu, and I click OK. Now, if you notice, now you would think I'm going to abc.edu, but if I mouse over it, do not click, I can see the link it's going to take me to. So anytime, whether you're in PowerPoint, whether you're utilizing the web, whether you got a link in your email, Make sure you mouse over it, do not click, and see where that link is taking you, and is that where you intended to go, okay? So be secure when using hyperlinks. 
So the next thing is to convert text. Now what I'm going to do is I'm going to come over here. I'm going to right click and, and add a new slide. Okay, so I can add a new slide by default there. I can also just simply come into home. I can do a new slide. This way I get all the default slide formats that are available inside this theme. So you'll find these to be different. Okay, and I can even do a blank one. So if you notice here, I have a blank one. And in order to do anything in here, I'm going to need to put a text box. Here I had a, you know, base sub theme. I can come in here. Matter of fact, let's go into the content area. And we're going to look at converting text to a smart art. So what that means is, first of all, I need some text. And if you notice, I have the bullets turned on. I'm going to do apple, enter. I'm going to do orange, enter. I'm going to do kiwi. Kiwi, enter, and matter of fact, I'll backspace, I only need three. I'm going to go ahead and increase this font size just so we can do this. Now, with all of those bullet points or num numerical, you know, numbered list, I can right click here, okay? And then if you notice, I have convert to SmartArt. Now, here's some base SmartArt graphics that I can choose from or... And as you notice, as I mouse over, it gives me a visual example of the smart art I'm choosing to use. Okay, so maybe I'm doing something on nutrition. I want to make it look better besides just a boring bulleted list. And I can go ahead and click. So I'm going to click on this. That's going to open the smart art. Okay, and I now have a smart art based on my list. The next thing is to edit and format smart art text. So I can go ahead and edit just a single text by double clicking on it, coming up to the home tab, choosing a different font. Let's choose something that's really off. There we go. That's really different. I can increase its size. I can change its font color, whatever the case may be. So that's editing and formatting smart art text. Again, I can do a single one like that or I can hit and hold the control key while I select the texts. I'm going to select all three that I want to modify. And now I'm going to go in and just use the standard Times New Roman. I'm going to make those, uh, let's see, something that's going to fit in there, 32 point font. And I'm going to change the font color just to make it dramatic to blue. Now, while we're here, let's talk about some other things quickly that we can do. For example, we can change the background on our SmartArt graphic, okay, by coming in here, choosing fill. I'm right clicking on that. I could choose a color to put in there. Of course, I want to make sure it's something contrasting with my font color. I can use the eyedropper to pull a color from my presentation, and I can even do picture. So I'm going to go ahead and do picture. I'm going to do from stock images that are available. And since we're talking about apples, why not do Apple? So I'll do Apple. I'll find something that's appropriate content for my presentation. Maybe this one here. I'll do insert. And if you notice, it's going to change all three because I had all three selected. Now, if I just wanted to do one, notice all I have to do is click off. Click back on this one selected. I'm going to just do this really quick for us. Um, I'm going to insert. I'm going to insert the fill color. I'm going to choose picture. I'm going to do stock images again. I'll do Apple. Let's pick another Apple this time. I'll choose insert and it inserts there. Now again, this font color doesn't really work, so I want to change the font color. Now, what I want to remind you is don't get too creative on this, okay? If you notice now, I've got an outline that really doesn't work. This purple, it sort of matches, but I can right-click again. I can choose to change the outline. This time, what I'm going to do is I'm going to change the outline to match more of the color of my background. I'll do that by choosing the eyedropper. I'll choose a color that's close. There we go. Now I get something that matches. So our next outcome is to insert and resize a shape. Well, again, if I come in here, I have shapes. Okay. 
Now I'm gonna go ahead and click outside of a text box. Matter of fact, let me go ahead and just get rid of that text box there. And I'm gonna insert shapes. Now shapes are something that I can insert to the body or the, the base slide. I don't necessarily have to have a text box to do that because in fact, the shape can become a text box, okay? So I'm gonna go ahead and pick this shape here, this Pentagon, and once I have that, you'll notice my cursor changes. I'm gonna left click and hold while I drag to the size of the Pentagon I want. Now notice I can do any formatting of the Pentagon. I'm gonna go ahead and just do a weird Pentagon shape there. I'm gonna come back into insert. I'm gonna go to shapes and I'm gonna show you how to get a perfect Pentagon. So I'm gonna choose Pentagon again. I'm gonna come over here. This time, I'm gonna hit and hold the shift key as I create the Pentagon. And if you notice, it's gonna create a Pentagon with equidistant um, length and size, okay? So I'm always gonna get a perfect Pentagon by choosing the shift. Now that works for circles. I can get a perfect circle, squares, etc. Once I have this Pentagon, I can apply effects to the shape. If you notice, when I'm clicked on the shape, if you notice up here in our ribbon, when I am clicked and activated on a shape, I get additional shape formats. And it becomes the default in my ribbon. So if you notice, here's the shape. I could edit the shape if I wanted to, change the shape, edit the points, etc. I can change the color pretty easily. Let's go to something kind of weird. I can do shape fill. This is no, no different than this shape that was in my smart art, okay? So everything I can do with this shape, I can do here. I can apply a colored background, a picture, gradient background, some sort of textual background, et cetera, okay? So at that point, I can apply shape styles. I can you know, insert and size a shape, which I did, apply effects to a shape. We just looked at that. Let's apply a couple effects to a shape. Um, shape effects. I'm going to apply the, uh, let's do a shadow here, okay? And if you notice, it's not coming up terribly um, to where you can see it. It's base right there because the shadow is going into the color of the slide. So let's go ahead and apply something that's gonna stick out a little bit. This is a glow. I'm gonna glow in a similar color to my shape there's a shape effect. I can also apply text to the shape simply by double clicking and saying this is text in a shape. Apply a shape style. So when we look here at shape styles, we've done this. I can apply, you know, textual styles, shape fill, etc. Um, so shape styles are over here. These are the shape styles. I already applied one by applying that green style that we had. Word art style, so if I wanted to, I could come in here and simply do a word art style in my shape. I definitely want something that's more contrasting and I'm probably gonna wanna increase the size of my text as well. So there, this is text in a shape. Insert a picture as the shape fill. We already did that, but let's do that again as a dedicated outcome in the order of the outcomes. I'm gonna do right click. I'm gonna come into fill. I'm gonna do a picture. I'm gonna go out to, I could do from local files. So if I had a picture I wanted to personally use, stock files, online, etc. So I'll just do stock again. And let's just see what is available for Pentagon, that's kind of interesting, right? Because there's an example of a Pentagon in a soccer ball. So I'm gonna go ahead and choose that, insert that, and there is my Pentagon example in my shape fill. Uh, move an object using grids, guidelines, and a ruler. So the first thing I need to do is turn on my ruler, and I do that by going to view. This is my ruler, so if I wanted to align with, with a specific, say I wanted to absolutely center this on the slide, 
I could do that here. I could use grid lines so that I can snap and align things to grid lines. Maybe I want to make sure that each of these corners of each of these objects align. Now, one thing to notice here, when I'm aligning with the grid or without the grid, I know it's a little hard to see, so I'll zoom in here, but you can see this little red line that's aligning two objects that I've created left. If I come over here, we'll see that it'll align them. It centers both of them and the same thing on the right. So I tend to use those to better align objects that I want to create, okay? And then let me turn off grid lines. Let me turn off the ruler. Let's go to guidelines. If you notice with guidelines, I just basically get some basic lines that would allow me to say center objects within my slide, either horizontally or vertically. Merge shapes. So one of the things that I can do is take two shapes that I've created. So I'm gonna go ahead and let's go ahead and modify this shape a little bit. I'm gonna create a sort of background, if you will, that I like. So if you notice, let me make that a little bit bigger so it kind of stands out here. I've created this, it's comprised of two different shapes. This shape that I've modified and this basic shape here. So to merge two shapes, what I'm gonna do is click and on the first shape, hit and hold down the control key while I select the second shape, okay? and then right click and I can group these shapes. So I'm gonna group these shapes and by grouping these shapes, they become one object, okay, or one shape. And now if I move that around, I'm moving both shapes. Now, if I do make a mistake, I can simply right click. I can go to group. It knows that these are grouped. So I get the option to ungroup. Now I can click on a, on a single shape and move it. I can again group those back together and move them together. I can even move them without grouping them by clicking on the first, hitting and holding the control key, hitting the second. Now these are both selected and they're going, whoop, that one, that one. Now they're both selected. Once I get the move cursor, they'll both move together even though they're not grouped. So to add a footer, to our slide, all we have to do is come up to the Insert tab, Header Footer, and if you notice on the slide, I'm able to add a footer. Now I can also add a slide number while I'm here as well. So if you notice, I'm on the first slide this time, Footer, I'm gonna say this is a footer on my slide, and I'm gonna apply it to all so that it gets applied to all of the slides that I have. Now, if you notice, I applied it and I haven't yet moved it on my title slide. I can move that. I can move the page number. I can make the page number and the, um, and the uh, footer larger simply by coming in, right, and changing its text size. I'm going to have to highlight that text. I'll come in. I'll change that size to something that's appropriate. And again, I can move that down to the right. I can do the same thing with this. The final outcome for this module is to add a slide transition and change effect options. So now that I have multiple slides, if I run the presentation, okay, I may want a transition between the slides, something that happens. Now, let me make a suggestion. Don't go slide transition ha happy and have different slide transitions between every single slide. My suggestion is keep it simple, pick one that works. I'm gonna go ahead and crush this celestial theme and you'll see that it gives me an example of what's going on there. Now I can also change the effects. So if I want to say, go ahead and crush that longer, I can do that as well. I can then hit the preview. And if you notice, compared to the first time, it's crushing slower. I can add a sound. Be careful adding too much creativity. Think about your audience before you do this. Those are the outcomes for Module 2 PowerPoint. I hope you enjoyed this video and look to see you in the next one.